Good morning, iPhone 14 development department. So, are we all set for the Pro lineup to get more expensive? That's right, Tim, and we up the storage to 256 gigs to compensate for it. Hmm, I, I see. Oh, hmm. Oh god, what? Are, are you not happy with that? Do you want us to up it to 512 gigs or something, or...? You know, I was I was just wondering, like, why even up the storage in the first place? Well, Tim, the, the prices, the, they're going up. People are gonna expect more out of the phone if they're paying more for the phone. So, you know, if we up the storage configuration, it doesn't even really count as a price hike. It's basically the same price as last year's iPhone with 256 gig, right? You're right, and I see what you're you're saying, but like, we're Apple? Why should we have to justify ourselves raising the prices? I mean, if we leave the storage the same, then in order to access the higher resolution ProRes recording or 8K, they'll have to spend an additional $100, and then we'll get an extra $200 per iPhone. Are you saying you want it to stay at 128 gigs again? You know what to do. Good morning! <sighs> Oh my god, who am I working for? Let's begin! All right, so we got a bunch of potential leaks for the iPhone 14. Yes, potential, because this is coming from a somewhat questionable source, but after reading over the reports, it sounds believable. It's not the kind of stuff that someone would make up. It could be fake. Again, mountain of salt, as you should expect with all iPhone 14 rumors, but as we're getting closer to the event, more and more things tend to end up being right. This is coming from a random account called U1122. Don't have a tremendous track record, but basically they are saying that the storage configurations is gonna remain the same across the lineup. So even the 14 Pro and Pro Max, yes, they're still getting price hikes and the storage amount will stay the same. And as upsetting and as annoying as that sounds, Apple could probably get away with it. You know, they seem to get a lot of people, including me, to spend more on the 256 gig storage last year just by saying that if you want to record at 4K in ProRes, you gotta get the 256 gig model. And you know, Apple probably is aware that there's a lot of hardcore Apple sheep out there that are upgrading their iPhone every year, no question. They just want the best camera and the best features. So yeah, the price hike can still happen and Apple could still expect you to spend an additional $100 to get that storage up there. So even if I end up being wrong on this, I'm okay with it because I think it's better for us to get our expectations in check and rather just assume the worst. And then if this leak ends up being wrong, then we'll be pleasantly surprised. Like, oh, there actually was a storage increase. Okay, it's not as bad as we thought. So I'm hoping I'm wrong on this one, but there are now several sources and analysts claiming that yes, the storage is not going up, but the prices are. Also from this account, we're hearing that purple is being the new theme for the iPhone 14 lineup. So for the most part on the regular iPhones, you know, the non-pros, Apple is dropping pink, which makes sense. I don't think that many people were buying the pink iPhone 13 and replacing pink with purple, which might sell a bit better because, you know, Thanos phone. It's a meme. It should be half the price or something. I don't know, but sort of similar situation with the pros as well. They are dropping the blue color. So I'm sorry, all you big fans of baby blue. I mean, Sierra blue, sorry. Blue will no longer be there in purple is rumored to enter the lineup, but similar to the iPhone 11 launch, that Alpine green is rumored to still stick around even at the launch. You don't have to wait six months for them to release a green option, but don't be surprised if in spring of next year, they have some other pro color, whether it's matte black or product red, or maybe they'll have more saturated blue that launches in the spring, we'll see. But purple should be the new color across both lineups. And they've also said that Apple is planning on beefing up the MagSafe rings on the iPhone 14. So there you go, some more last minute kind of exclusives to the iPhone 14 lineup that we didn't previously hear about. And this report is claiming that Apple is coming up with a new exclusive MagSafe accessory that will only really work on the iPhone 14 series. And this is rumored to be an updated MagSafe battery bank. So just when I got excited for the last MagSafe battery bank because I was like, hey, unlike the battery cases, you can actually use these on future iPhones. Apple might go ahead and be like, actually, here's a way better battery case. And this one is far superior. So you'll definitely want to use it. Maybe it has improved reverse wireless charging capabilities. Maybe it charges your iPhone faster. But overall, it should just mean the iPhone 14 has a more solid grip on all of its MagSafe accessories, which is good because I think MagSafe is awesome. But probably the most interesting 
report that this account dropped that I think is a big sign for good news is they said that the A16 chip should have a bigger emphasis on efficiency and thermal management. That's actually a big request of mine. It may not sound like a big deal, but when you're using 5G a lot, especially if you're doing a FaceTime call like outside in this crazy heat wave we're all experiencing, I definitely run into times where my iPhone will overheat or the display will substantially dim to save on power and to save the phone from overheating. And I think it's kind of annoying. You know, it kind of makes me want Apple to get out their custom made modems so that they can be made more efficiently. And hopefully the A16 chip can help address that. But sadly, A16 chip is rumored to be exclusive to the Pro models. So if you're not planning on spending $1,100 on your iPhone, then you're probably not going to get those efficiency gains. But another update that I wanted to address, which is not from this sketchy online account, but is from a more believable, trustworthy source, Ming-Chi Kuo. He's saying Apple has secured orders and implemented an improved ultra-wide lens that will come to all iPhone 14s. Not just the Pro models, but these will have larger pixels on the sensor, which should allow for better low-light performance, while still probably retaining that 12 megapixels total. The individual pixels are much, much better, and that will mean your ultra-wide shots will likely be far sharper, capture a lot more detail, perform better in the dark, which absolutely has been a complaint of iPhones ever since the ultra-wide camera has existed. It never quite holds up to the same quality of the regular wide lens, which is rumored to get a megapixel bump as well, but as many of you have since corrected me on, when you have a sensor with more megapixels in it, it's actually harder for it to perform in low light, but I think the improved ultra-wide lens will help combat that and allow for night mode shots to look amazing. And there's been a lot of talk about satellite connectivity because of the far out invite image and Apple marketing the event with ready for launch and all that, kind of a space theme. A lot of people are like, is the iPhone 14 gonna have satellite communication features? And the simple answer is yes, but the more truthful answer is so will your iPhone 13 and so will your iPhone 12 because Starlink is the most common low earth orbit satellite constellation and they've announced that next year they're gonna start sending up V2 satellites which are capable of reaching current day smartphones. You don't need special hardware on your iPhone in order to have satellite communications anymore, which I used to think wasn't possible, but SpaceX and T-Mobile are making it happen. So improved ultra wide sensors across the board, better efficiency from the A16 chip, purple across the lineup, and crappy storage options that are gonna leave you wanting more, and the pricing is likely to be pretty bad. In fact, I think that the 14 Max is actually gonna start at $999, 14 Pro gonna be $1,099, and the 14 Pro Max I think could easily be over $1,199 because the number of people that are willing to pay top dollar for their iPhone is pretty high, and if it's just a difference of $50 more than they were expecting, they'll probably do it, and if they want the better camera features, they gotta opt for the higher storage configurations, but this random account did say not to expect any two terabyte iPhones, but six gigs of RAM should now be the standard across the lineup, so there's a win there, I guess. Also, even though the iPhone 14 lineup is still rocking lightning, there's a lot of talk now that they're actually finally going to be supporting 30 watt USB-C fast charging, given you have USB-C on the charge brick. Obviously, the iPhone itself is still gonna charge via lightning, which has had the capability of doing 30 watts for years, but Apple has just been so hesitant to bring it to the iPhone. I'm confused why they waited this long, but hey, I still look at it as a good sign because if Apple is starting to upsell people and starting to brag about faster charging on the iPhone, that gives them even more reason to switch to Type-C in the future, which can handle infinitely faster speeds than Lightning can. So if it's 30 watts this year, it could easily be 45 to 60 watts next year once the iPhone switches to Type-C, which given all the government pressure around the world, I feel like is more and more likely. What are you guys most excited for with the iPhone 14 lineup? All that good stuff. Let me know your thoughts down below. This is your Apple Sheep here, and I'll see you all in the next one.